Sup homies, my name is Jun, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to play guitar like Chon. As you can see, this video is pretty long. As with my Polyphia tutorial, I put timestamps in the description and in the comment section so you guys can get to where you want to go. I also put a lot of other resources in the description, such as links to other videos that explain the techniques and theory that I cover, and a discount code to DISTROKID. Before we get started, I really want to thank DistroKid for sponsoring this video. If you're an independent artist, you'll know how difficult it is to get your music on major platforms such as Spotify and iTunes. But now with DistroKid, it's easier than ever. If you don't know what DistroKid is, it is a service that helps musicians put their music on platforms such as Spotify and iTunes and Apple Music. For only $19.99 a year, you get unlimited uploads to all these major platforms and 150 more music providers across the world. But the best part about DistroKid is that you get to keep 100% of your royalties. It is a for musicians by musician service. They know the struggle. Thanks to DistroKid, I was able to upload Hypebeast 2018 and the song that I made for this video onto Spotify so you guys can listen to it on the go. So if you want to use this service and get your music out there, make sure to use the link in the description below to get 7% off your first year. Now as a disclaimer, Chon is literally my favorite band, so please don't get offended if I get a little crass in this video. It's only for fun and I hope you learn something along the way. I'll be teaching you how to emulate Chon in three simple steps. Step number one will be techniques and phrasing. Step number two will be songwriting. And then step number three will be their aesthetic. So grab your Ibanez guitar and let's get started. Step number one, techniques and phrasing. Now Chon is one of the most technical bands that plays almost exclusively on the clean channel. They're proggy without being pretentious and their music just gives overall good vibes. Now there are four key techniques you can utilize to achieve their sound. Hybrid picking, string skipping, sweep picking, and tapping. By the way, before anyone asks, Mario's picking technique does not make any of this easier. He holds it the way he does because he sustained an injury and that's just the way it is. Now I've developed an exercise that I think might help in improving these aspects of your playing, but I'll explain what the techniques are first and I'll show you the exercise at the end of this section. The most prominent technique they use is hybrid picking. Now hybrid picking is when you use your pick and your fingers to accentuate certain notes in a phrase. Now a good way to practice this technique, in my opinion, is actually to play acoustic finger style songs. So songs that challenge both your left and right hand coordination in terms of playing bass notes and melody lines will help a lot in mastering this technique. Songs like Craig DeAndre's Falling for Twelves is a personal favorite of mine. Or what you can do is try to incorporate this technique into songs you already know. Now string skipping in the Chon style is a bit similar to how they approach hybrid picking. They'll use it to imply a chord and then play a melody on top of it. So there's a lot of theory on note choice, but again, my theory isn't great. But there is a channel called Let's Talk About Math Rock who explains this very well. So I'm gonna leave it to him to talk about how to choose your notes. It's mainly to do with the modes and the chords that you're trying to imply. Now in terms of the mechanics of this technique, it's very dependent on knowing when to use an upstroke or a downstroke depending on the context of the riff. I highly suggest watching Paul Gilbert's videos on string skipping and he's the master, so again, I'll leave it up to him. Now sweet picking, oh boy. This was one of the biggest hurdles I had as a guitar player and I'm sure it is for a lot of other guitar players out there. Now in terms of the mechanics, I think that there's already a ton of videos on YouTube explaining how to properly do this technique. I feel that it'll be a little redundant if I show you exactly how to sweep. So I think what's more valuable is teaching you guys the tips to get it cleaner. Now it felt like it took me about three to five years after the discovery of this technique to finally get it down to where I was satisfied with the cleanliness. Now the reason for this I think is because I was practicing wrong. I would force myself to play the hardest arpeggio I could find and that's not the way to approach this. So I'll explain how I practice to get clean. So I started with this arpeggio. <laughs> The great thing about this arpeggio is that it sort of outlines two chords I was already familiar with. If you guys are familiar with the cage system, this is a C type chord. And then on top of that, there's a D. And then just add an extra note. So what I did was I would break this arpeggio down to smaller arpeggios. I started with the top shape, which was the D chord I was talking about. And then adding that extra note. So I would practice only those three strings.
Once I could get it clean, I would add speed. So once I got it to a speed that I was satisfied with and I could play it clean, I would then add an extra string. Once I add an extra string, I would repeat the entire process, starting slow, adding speed, and then finally once I got it to a speed and cleanliness I was okay with, I would add the next string. Now one last tip that I feel is overlooked a lot is how to mute when you're sweeping. When you're sweeping, the notes that you don't play are just as important as the notes you do play. When you move on to a different string, make sure you use at least one of your fingers to mute the adjacent strings. So for example, for the three note arpeggio that we started with, I'm using my index finger to mute the second string. Once I get to the second string, I keep my index finger on the first string for a little bit just to make sure that both my middle finger and my index finger are muting the first string. When you're muting strings, it's great to have a failsafe, so I like to mute with two fingers whenever I can. Now once you get to the third string note, the fourth to sixth string is actually muted with your right hand. So in this case, again, I'm using my middle finger and my index finger to mute both the second and first string. So again, if you guys don't know how to sweep yet, make sure to check the video description. I left a lot of other tutorials. I even left Mario sweeping technique in there so you guys can check that out to see what shapes he uses. Just make sure that you guys stay persistent and I wish you the best of luck. Now finally, tapping is sort of an extension of legato. So Chon uses tapping combined with the other techniques to create very interesting intervals. The one thing that a lot of beginners struggle with when it comes to tapping is to get the volume to get the notes actually come out. Make sure that when you're tapping, to get the note behind the tapping finger, you do have to flick down with your right hand. It's the same thing with legato, where you have to flick down to get the pull off. Now here's a little exercise that I developed based on the Chan song OG. It's based off an E major seven arpeggio. So in fact, you can use it to practice your sweeping. But the great thing about this exercise, in my opinion, is that it's modular. So first, you want to start with your index finger on the 5th string, 7th fret. Pick that with the downstroke, and then you hammer on the next note, which is 5th string, 11th fret. Now you string skip, and then you head to the 3rd string, 8th fret, and you do an upstroke. And then you sweep upwards towards the 4th string, and you hit the 9th fret. Now after that, you have to do an upstroke on the 3rd string, 11th fret, and pull off to the 8th fret. This is gonna be a little difficult since you do have to do a small string skip, but just keep practicing. And then to end it, you sweep upwards from the 4th string, 9th fret, to the 5th string, 11th fret, and then repeat the entire thing. Now that's the foundation of the exercise, but you can move it around and play with it and see what you can come up with. So here's a few examples of what other things you can do with this exercise. Now let's move on to phrasing. Their phrasing is again based on the Lydian mode, every prog guitarist's favorite mode. So it's really important to brush up on modes, incorporate that into your playing, and know how they correlate with chord progressions. Chan is very Lydian focused, and that's because they always land on the fourth. Now if you don't understand what that means, make sure to check the resources that I put in the description. So they like to play melodies on top of chords, similar to what Matias Asato or Eric Gales does. <laughs> Using the same modal concepts as before, they also like to play the root of a note and then play a melody on top of that to imply a chord. This is the kind of phrasing that a lot of piano players tend to do. This type of phrasing is demonstrated very well in the outro of Continue.
Now, in terms of soloing, they actually like to play the same note on two different strings to give a more staccato feel. Now, here's where things get a little bit more tricky. Harmonizing. Now there's a lot of theory involved, but here's the most basic version of how to harmonize. Now harmonizing is essentially playing around with intervals, so let's start with something simple like the A major scale. Now the easiest way to harmonize an A major scale is just to move up one note from the scale root and then just play the scale from there. Now that didn't sound very pleasant, but if we move up to the third degree, suddenly something nice is going on. So I'm gonna play through the scale and hopefully you get an idea of what each degree sounds like. So just to dive a little bit deeper into this, let's take the exercise riff that I came up with and then we'll try to harmonize that. So harmonizing from the third degree sounded really nice just now, so let's try that with this riff. Our root note was the E in the fifth string, seventh fret. So if we move it two intervals up, we'll get the third degree. So I'm gonna move it to the eleventh fret. Now the second note was the eleventh fret, so two degrees off that, if we look at the scale, is the 5th string, 14th fret. Now the 3rd degree from the 3rd string, 8th fret, is the 3rd string, 11th fret. 4th string, 9th fret, the 3rd degree would be... So that's the 4th string, 13th fret. The 3rd string, 11th fret, the 3rd degree of that would be... Because this is an E major 7, it could be a major scale or a the Lydian scale. I chose the Lydian scale because, you know, prog. But basically, I found those notes just following the scale. So I would just add the following two notes from the original note to get the third degree. So let's see what it sounds like harmonized. So that's sounding pretty chony already, but... They take it to a whole other level. So just make sure that you explore. The most important thing about harmonizing is using your ear. Those theoretical concepts that I showed you are just there as guidelines. Sometimes breaking the rules yields amazing results. Now, I'm sorry the phrasing section seems a little vague, but it's a bit difficult without just straight up learning Chan songs. There's a great channel by the guitarist Nikola Gugoski, and he slows down Chan songs and has a tablature for it on the screen so you can play along. He also plays along with the tablature in the video so you can see how he fingers each note. It's a great way to start learning Chan songs, so you can go ahead and check out his channel for that. Huh, <sighs> now we're on to step two, songwriting. So I'll be teaching you the most basic aspects of Chan songwriting. Essentially, you want to imagine you're composing for a Legend of Zelda game, but your entire player base are skaters and surfers, and they're all good at Smash. 1v1 my Pikachu, bitch! No, I'm just kidding, I suck. So I'll be starting with the chord progressions. Essentially, there are only four shapes to remember. The first shape is the major shape. The second shape is the minor shape. The third shape is the dominant seven shape. And then the fourth shape is the diminished shape. You probably already know where this is going. And yes, it's chord scales, also known as modes. Don't worry, I'm gonna break this down into guitar talk. So let's take this C major scale and play it on one string. I'm gonna play it from the fifth string. So the first note in the scale is a major, so we use the first chord shape. The second and third notes are going to be a minor, so we use the second chord shape. Now the fourth note is a major, so we're gonna use chord shape number one. And then we're gonna use the dominant seven shape, shape number three for the next note. And then a minor for the next note. Now this next chord is rarely used and it can be replaced by a minor chord, but it's supposed to be a flat five chord. 
So we use chord shape number four. And then the last note, which is just the octave, is going to be a major, so chord shape number one. So now that you know which note corresponds with which chord, you can try to transpose it to the sixth string as well. Here are some examples of the chords in context in Chan songs. Of course, as you could see, they don't use the exact same chords all the time. So make sure to explore and extend the chords that I gave you. You can look up some videos from Eric Johnson or Tosin Abasi on how to extend chord voicings. Now in terms of structure, they don't really have any set structure for all of their songs. But I would say a common one would be an introduction that establishes a theme in the song, and then a verse, then a chorus that reflects the introduction, and then the second verse takes you somewhere completely different. It'll go back into a chorus and then maybe a solo and then a last chorus. But yeah, they don't have any set structure, so feel free to get creative. Just don't overload the songs with your ideas. Chan songs are dynamic but still straightforward at the same time. So now that we learned that playing like Chan is way too hard and we're just gonna throw our guitars out, Let's at least explore what we can achieve, which is their aesthetic. Now, emulating Chan's aesthetic is relatively simple. It just depends on how far you want to take the meme. You want to go for the Wario look, then dress like a cholo. For that classic vintage Mario, then wear a floral Hawaiian shirt and some skinny shorts. But now for a more serious take, they dress really comfortable. Joggers on a sweatshirt, t-shirt and jeans with a beanie, like... It's just chill shit. In terms of shoes, all you have to do is get yourself a pair of skate shoes and you're set. So to finish this video off, I wanted to show you guys a song that I made incorporating the techniques that I discussed in this video. Now, I've been very busy these last few months, as you could tell from the upload schedule. So I couldn't shoot a proper music video this time around, but I did manage to get a playthrough of this song. So hope you enjoy. <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was at least informative enough to give you some concepts and thoughts on how to explore Chon's style. It might not have been as comprehensive as the Polyphia video, but their music is easier. Oh shit! And I want to give a special shout out to Chen Bolu for helping me write the bass section for the song. He is an absolute monster and I'm gonna leave his Instagram in the description if you want more tasty bass licks. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned something from this video, then make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you dislike this video, then make sure to leave any feedback in the comment section below. Also feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. I've been very active in answering as many questions as I can. Also leave any suggestions on what bands you want me to cover next. If you want to see that video, make sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified when that video comes up. I actually made a Chan inspired song before and you can check that out in my channel. That song was for a guitar competition here in Taiwan and I actually got top 10 for that so that was really neat. Again, make sure to look in the video description. There's a ton of information that you can get from there. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>